Many of you have heard about Australia's first ever battery gigafactory, but you probably haven't heard that the chemistry behind the batteries being built in this factory is claimed to make Tesla vehicles have 70% more range. In fact, apparently these batteries have a chemistry that is agnostic, meaning you could use either lithium ion phosphate, NMC, or a number of other chemistries to make these packs work. They also have a very, very interesting and unique design. And this design enables these batteries to be the safest under extreme temperatures, like those faced in Australia, Africa, and many parts of Asia. my friends welcome to the channel on the electric viking great to see you welcome to the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else i hope you have had an amazing week it's been really exciting learning about everything that's going on over the last even just the last couple of days now this new battery gigafactory when i heard about it i thought you know what i need to know what's going on here so i did some research i could not find out what battery chemistry they were using in the batteries and then i realized that they were licensing battery chemistry from a united states company called cadenza cadenza innovation doesn't actually make the batteries themselves now they have done pilot trials to make sure that they work what they decided to do was to license the technology to a range of companies worldwide they thought it was that good and it turns out it actually might be that good now, Cadenza is an American developer and designer of lithium-ion battery technologies and energy storage solutions. And that company was founded in 2012 by inorganic chemist and battery researcher Christina Lamp Onorad. Cadenza licenses its lithium-ion cell architecture to global manufacturers for various energy storage applications. But they claim that if Tesla was to install their batteries in their cars, it could potentially lead to a 70% improvement in range. I'm not sure if that's actually true, but that's what Cadenza claim. One of the biggest advantages of this battery type, not just the chemistry, but the actual cell type and the housing of the cell is its ability to withstand extreme heat. Cadenza Innovation Supercell Battery architecture is designed to stop propagation during thermal runaway. The design of the batteries combines properties from wound jelly rolls and large prismatic cells to form highly dense lithium ion battery structures. Now, CB Insights analyzed this technology and they said that it uses large format prismatic cells that easily assemble into packs for ESS energy storage and electric vehicle applications. They also said that these batteries have industry leading safety and they protect against propagating thermal runaway, overcharge, internal short circuits and abuse conditions. Now, apparently these batteries, according to analysts, highly competitive cost wise by leveraging standard industry components and providing savings to system level design. Currently, the product is an 83 amp hour supercell containing 24 jelly rolls. A 91 amp hour version will be available by the end of this year. And Cadenza's technology is chemistry agnostic and currently using a nickel, manganese and cobalt cathode. The company says it has a roadmap to 500 watts per liter in energy density. Now, interestingly, MIT says that Christina Lamp Honorad is the queen of batteries and that this new battery design improves performance, cost, and safety of large lithium-ion batteries. Now, interestingly, it wasn't very long after this battery cell type was revealed. It's essentially a bigger 2170 cell. Then Tesla themselves announced their bigger 2170 cell, the 4680 cell. And in fact, if you have a look at the breakdown in Sandy Munro's teardown of the Tesla Model Y with the new 4680 cells, Although 4680s are using a different way to prevent thermal runaway in the cells, and the packaging is different. Obviously, you've seen the 4680 cells. They have a very, very dense and thick glue-like material which separates the cells. Cadenza's design actually isn't all that different. 
And one big point that Cadenza made was that using big cells, big jelly rolls, is more efficient and cheaper than using smaller ones, which is basically what Tesla have been saying as well. Now, the majority of rechargeable lithium-ion batteries are powered by cylindrical sheets of metal known as jelly rolls. For use in big factories, jelly rolls can be made either large to limit the total cost of battery assembly or small to leverage a more efficient cell design that brings slightly higher energy density. Now, Tesla famously achieves longer vehicle ranges by using smaller jelly rolls than what Cadenza are using, but they address safety issues with cooling tubes, intricate circuitry, and by spacing out each roll. Cadenza has patented a simpler battery system it calls the supercell. This allows small jelly rolls to be tightly packed together into one module. Now, the key to a supercell is a non-combustible ceramic fiber material that each jelly roll sits in like an egg in a carton. Now, this material that surrounds each jelly roll helps to control temperatures throughout the cell and isolate damage caused by an overheated jelly roll. A metal shunt wrapped around each jelly roll and a flame retardant layer of the supercell wall that relieves pressure in the case of thermal event add to its safety advantages. So this advanced safety allows Cadence to package the jelly rolls tighter for increased energy density. Plus, the supercell's straightforward design, which leverages many parts that are currently manufactured at low costs and high volumes, keeps production costs down. Finally, each supercell module is designed to click together like Lego blocks, making it possible for manufacturers to easily scale their battery sizes to fit customer needs. Now, you can see why this new Australian company decided to license this battery technology for their Gigafactory in Australia. Privately owned Australian company Energy Renaissance is on track to launch its groundbreaking Renaissance One Gigafactory in New South Wales coal country. After successfully completing a pilot program, this factory is actually very, very close to what will be the production site of Australia's largest battery. That battery will be in excess of 700 gigawatt hours, making it one of the five largest batteries anywhere in the world, and also making it nearly three times the size of the Hornsdale battery in Adelaide, which used to be the world's largest battery pack. Energy Renaissance has just completed a successful pilot program, and their pilot facility, dubbed Project Apollo, is currently up and running, producing battery cells with plans to scale up to 5.3 gigawatt hours of energy storage every year. The success of the pilot project, which was backed by the federal government's Advanced Manufacturing Growth Center, means that Energy Renaissance has met its funding milestone, a crucial step towards the launch of its much larger facility in December of this year. It's only months away. The 4,500 square meter Renaissance One manufacturing plant, also at Tamago, will house more than 700 employees and initially produce more than 300 megawatt hours in its first year of production. Energy Renaissance says its aim is to offer safe, affordable, and 100% Australian made lithium ion batteries, optimized for hot climates to satisfy rising domestic and export demand for commercial and industrial stationary storage. Currently, the batteries being made at the facility use 92% local content. This is what Energy Renaissance said. Just a few years ago, we were told it wasn't possible to manufacture batteries in Australia. Today, in the shadow of our soon-to-be-completed Renaissance One facility, I can tell you that it is absolutely possible to manufacture batteries in Australia. Jens Goneman, Managing Director of AMGC, says Energy Renaissance is proof that Australia can be a world leader in the renewable energy industry. Energy Renaissance's approach typifies how we should be seeking to move away from our reliance on raw commodities and tap into our abundant human commodities and manufacturing prowess to transform it into complex goods for local and export markets. And this is something that Robin Denholm, the chairman of Tesla, has been saying Australia should be doing. In fact, it's only a few months ago that she complained, she opined, she said, why is Australia not making batteries here in Australia? Why are we not actually taking our raw materials and turning them into the real product? Why are we shipping all these raw materials to China for them to then take advantage of them and to make batteries and sell them at a profit? 
She had a good point. And clearly, Energy Renaissance agree with her mindset. Energy Renaissance, though, have been working on plans to build a battery gigawatt scale factory in Australia since 2017, first looking to set up shop in Darwin, but ultimately landing in the Hunter region of New South Wales due to its easy access to the port of Newcastle and its proximity to highly skilled talent from CSIRO's Energy Centre and graduates from the University of Newcastle. The manufacture of lithium iron batteries globally is increasing at an exponential rate, with supply expected to increase nearly sevenfold over the next decade from 1,000 gigawatt hours per annum in 2021 to 7,000 in 2031, according to analysts by Britain's Faraday Institution. Now, I think they've really underdone it. I believe that battery production will probably increase by a factor of 20 to 30 within the next 10 years. And it's really good to see this Australian company licensing some incredibly impressive American technology to make batteries for consumers here in Australia to make use of. Personally, I'm excited to see this. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.